Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Decently and Decent, episode 22. Glad to have you here. As always, I appreciate your time. Let's talk about the Tate brothers. <laughs> they actually came up briefly in last week's episode, something completely unrelated, but they are back in the headlines today, which they always seemingly find a way to do. If it's been more than a few days and they're not in the headlines, I'm concerned something's broken with the internet uh, because they got arrested again, detained by... Uh, DICOT, which is uh, basically the the uh, Organized Crime and Terrorism Task Force in Romania. Um, they've obviously been under investigation for the, the sex trafficking, et cetera, stuff where they spent a lot of time in jail from, got out. Uh, they got raided once again, and it sounds like there's some new charges being levied against them. This time uh, it's looking into child trafficking uh, and money laundering. And I think there's... Um, some charges that have to do with sexual uh, relationships with a minor as well. Uh, don't quote me on that. There's a lot of information swirling around, but it sounds like there's some additional charges in addition to the ones that they've already, that are already, uh, that, you know, the Romanian authorities have already been trying to build a case against them with. Um, so I have a couple of things I wanted to look through. Um, and I just want to chat about it real quick because I have, <sighs> I have a little bit of, well, everyone obviously knows who the Tates are for the most part. I have a, an interesting brief history with, with Andrew um, because I actually made a, this was years ago, I made a video about him before he really became um, ubiquitous around the globe. It was like he was just kind of this annoying tryhard that was saying all these types of things on the internet that were obviously just rage bait. And, uh, what did I, I tell And it was more so when he was, he was going heavy into the, uh, he was mostly known for his, his, uh, G hustlers Academy, right. I guess is the Academy he charges like 50 or hundred bucks for a month where he like teaches men how to, you know, get girls and make money and be confident, et cetera, et cetera. So I made this video. I called it CEO of seducing women. Sorry. Here it is. The other courses. Everything has five star reviews, so you know it's reliable, and you know he was. Oh, this was back in the day. He was charging eleven eleven hundred dollars for Hustlers University. Maybe it wasn't a was it a one time fee? I, I don't even know. This was so long ago. Now I made this video in um, what does it say here? Uh, June of twenty twenty. So this was like full blown pandemic. <laughs> I could see my hair was getting a little bit longer. Uh, just poking fun of him or uh, whatever. Typical Andrew Tate stuff. Back then, it, it didn't really mean much to me. He just seemed like kind of this alpha male clown that was, you know, he had some principles that made sense. It's like I, I can relate to, and, and I've all, I've always said this about Andrew, like there are a lot of things that come out of his mouth I can relate to when he's talking about personal accountability and, and taking care of yourself and hustle and, you know, having to, uh, you know, don't just let the life pass you by. You need to try and try and make something for yourself. Um, you know, agreeable, an agreeable message. But I think where a lot of people get hung up is, uh, you know, since he's become so controversial, since having his rise to the top of social media stardom over the last couple of years, people aren't able to separate one thing from another. Like for me, it's like two things can be true at the same time, right? Andrew Tate can make some valid points that make a lot of sense that I agree with that I think are helpful for young men. But he also at the same time can be a morally bankrupt, smut peddling, narcissistic cocksucker, right? Those two things can both be happening at the same time, which is how I've always felt. Um, and, you know, as far as these charges that took place, you know, when when he initially got, he got bagged for, uh, well, actually, um, let me back up here. I, I made... Uh, another video about him two years ago because he had actually, I did a stream. I think it was a stream with my friend, Mr. Gigi, where we watched through a couple of Andrew Tate videos Um, and just ragged on, you know, here it is right here. The most unpredictable man on the internet. We made this three years ago in like 2021. This was on his channel. We watched through some shit and just kind of like laughed about it. And then he eventually made some content where he watched that video and responded and he talked about me trashed on my wife a little bit. Um, so I made a response. I, I just, 
I, at the time, I was like, it's whatever. It's Andrew. This is what he does. He just talks shit about everybody. It's fine. And then he, originally when the, the charges came out of him getting nabbed on, on sex trafficking charges and he was facing that initially, I, I made another video just talking about that and then just talking briefly about the things he said about me. I'll see if I hear it here, that but. His entire adult life is significant. Oh. Oh, yes, my feelings are so hurt. First of all, a man having a sense of humor, that would oh, be. here we go. So there we four. go. Yeah, he, this is where he shits, my like wife, shits on my wife. <laughs> He's not wrong, honestly. I would have been licking a crack of Jesus. Basically, Jesus Christ are beacons for lesser individuals like you, so you can learn via my experience. <laughs> him addressing so, me of back course, then. I'm right about everything. Of course, I am. You're a little fat boy. You can't be Tate. So, pay attention. Or I guess he I'm was talking, kidding, he was so calling Mr. Gigi a little fat boy, and then I think he was calling me a lesbian. I can't remember. Like 50 minutes of that <laughs> i'm biologically wired hormonally wired to be better than <laughs> and especially better than this is he still a girl or is he a boy so i'm sure he exaggerates all the time for the sake of what he assumes is entertainment value which i understand so let's get into the insults here can we so it, for those listening it may, may be hard to i imagine you can tell or if you can delineate between my voice in the video I'm watching versus my voice on this podcast right now. But, uh, I mean, I'm not homophobic in any way, but I said the gayest thing that ever existed was buying a picture of a girl's tits. I'm going to change that. The gayest thing that's ever existed is these two on a YouTube video. <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of funny. He's not wrong. Honestly, I would have been Licking the crack of Gigi's ass if we weren't recording remotely, okay? Am I kidding? Who knows? All I know is that dudes that call everything yeah, that's gay. funny. Anyways, he goes on to pick up, pull up my Instagram account. I mentioned that, yeah, sex is important. So as you'd expect, he spends the next, you know, 25 minutes continuing with the cheap insults and, you know, jerking himself off. Because they have low testosterone levels, he's doing that all over <laughs> it. He goes through my Instagram a bit at the time, which is whole. hilarious. I mean, this is him dressed as a tomato. Yeah, he's my favorite part. No, him knowing nothing about the tomato mafia early days on Instagram. I had a randomly had a tomato outfit and I got a kick out of that. He finds, <laughs> I mean, this is the man telling, he, he finds the picture of my, my origin story where I was birthed as a tomato. I knew how a man should act. This is the man telling a four time kickboxing world champion, multimillionaire, how men act. That's right. He doesn't, he doesn't know the, the canon to that story. Right. But he <laughs> Uh, and I, I don't know, I might have skipped it or went by it, but he also goes on to then look at my wife and shit talks her and calls her a four out of 10, which uh, is obviously blasphemy. Uh, my wife's an angel, sweetheart, and God bless her. And I mean, for what it's worth, she was a little bit heavier back then, was just had a little more baby weight on. So, you know, maybe was to the lay person, like less physically fit and attractive to someone that didn't know her, but that's the... That's the crazy part, man, about being married is like you can love someone unconditionally regardless uh, of their physical appearance, right? And I've always just, yeah, I've all, you know, that's, it's, it's, it's been an interesting journey for me the last couple of years, like seeing her really take an interest in fitness and stuff like that. And everyone, you know, living my life online, I've, when she first was online and she was heavier, like the, just the amount of comments that have come through in the last couple of years that have been all positive. They're great. It's, it's, it's flattering for her, I'm sure. But for me, it's just interesting. Cause I'm like, man, it's, it's always been, she's always just been my wife, man. I'm always, always just going to love her regardless. But, but there is a, another side of me too, that is, you know, you guys that know me, like knows I'm into, I want to say into, but I'm somebody that values physical fitness in a way that translates into the rest of your life. As far as like, uh, just overall well-being and I'm I'm happy that my wife adopted that as well because for the same reasons and I guess the physical piece is just kind of like a happy side effect anyways that was like my little soiree I would take there was never it was it, it was it was what it was this particular video I made in response was after he had kind of had that blow up you know like the first video I made was he was kind of like on the on the fringes still just like making the rounds on commentary YouTube and then he went on one of the most viral internet runs you know we've seen in the last several years uh, into the who they are today all that is to say i've never been like a personal fan of andrew tate i understand i would say in a 
in a basic way on a human level, why he has become so popular because I know how human attention works, obviously. And I understand why so many young men have really looked to him and latched onto him as this sort of demigod, perfect model of what it means to be an alpha man, which is unfortunate in my opinion, but I understand why uh, for a couple of reasons that I spoke about last week. But one is that I think there is a vacuum for a lot of really solid male role models. And the unfortunate way in which the internet works is that even the good ones are harder to find because they aren't the ones that are going to get amplified or go viral for their outrageous takes or whatever the fuck it is, right? So that is kind of a side effect, I think, of the attention economy and how social media has really transformed the way we consume content. It now, unfortunately, uh, makes it more difficult to find really solid individuals putting out content regularly. Now that's not to say that that doesn't exist because it does. There's a lot of I what I would consider good good role models out there making content. Some some are making content specifically to young men about how to grow into be men of character. Others are just living their life in a way that I think is admirable and not trying to preach but are you know someone you could someone you could look at and be like this is this is someone I think could be a good role model for young people looking for direction. But the Tates were always the loudest in the room, always making the most ludicrous statements and made all this money on the back of their smut peddling, et cetera, et cetera. So they, they kind of like de facto became the guys. And then they have, and, and then obviously the whole anti-establishment vibe from them too, where Andrew and, and it's always about the matrix and then trying to be cut down in the, the deep state. And I will say like on that side of things, like his his views and the way he talks about government, a lot of that stuff too, some of it resonates and, and makes sense. I think just calling everything a matrix is a little bit uh, cavalier, but I, I do think, you know, in general, the way the, the globe is run, government, uh, you know, this idea that there is some level of dark curtain that people live behind that we don't really know where the real power and money are held. And they're the ones kind of pulling the strings, moving the marionette puppets that are at the government level. A lot of that stuff I, 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 I generally tend to agree with. But I'm not smart enough to know, you know what I mean? I'm not smart enough to know like exactly what's going on. But I do have a very, very healthy skepticism of anything, any institution or organization that is supposedly meant to take care of us or help us because you just see time and time again how it's always just self-interest and money and power that are the only things that truly matter to the people uh, in these positions and the only person looking out for you is, is yourself. And that's my general feeling of it. So when, a lot of the, a lot of his talks around that sort of thing, I sometimes nod my head and say, yeah, that could make sense. But I also think that like that sets up an easy kind of get out of jail free card. If it's like, well, if you're actually under investigation for some real crimes, you can be like, well, it's just the matrix trying to come get me because I'm preaching the truth. Now, again, I'm not a fucking brilliant man, it's possibly true. There could be people in Romania that Andrew's upset that don't like him and that have some influence at a some sort of police task force level and they could exact that influence. Or it's possible that this man is a scumbag and he committed these crimes. I don't know. Maybe time will tell and justice will prevail. That kind of fell off the radar for a while until today when he got rearrested. Now, mind you, I believe he was there for 24 hours, detained. The There was some judge, from what I understand, that didn't find that there was enough new evidence to keep them detained for any longer. So they went back home. And then from what I understand, just from when I was looking at these clips on Twitter, they were doing like what they called an emergency meeting live stream where they were talking and we're going to watch through some of that. And then the police showed up at their house again during the live stream and they shut it down. And I think that's the last thing that happened. By the time this podcast comes out, maybe there'll be some more information. But one of the things I wanted to look through first was just, uh, first of all, this Abba and Preach came out with a new video, self-snitching. Andrew Tate admits to sleeping with minors, gets new charges. If you don't know who Abba and Preach are, um, you may not. They're pretty big YouTubers, commentary YouTubers, talk about a lot of red pill stuff, Tate stuff, a lot of fresh and fit stuff. I generally find myself resonating with most of their takes, and I find them very entertaining. So shout out Abba and Preach. Um, just seem like pretty down-to-earth guys that have solid heads on their shoulders, good moral foundation, and they make me laugh. So they have been vocally anti-Tate for a while now for kind of the same reasons that I am, where it's like, yeah, you have all these things, this money, this power, and like, blah, blah, that's nice, but you're morally bankrupt. You've literally, you made all your money on the back of vulnerable girls being exploited 
to do adult sex work and you just taking a hefty percentage off the top because you knew how to manipulate the situation. Yeah, right. So, and so like, regardless of the legalities of it and whether they're innocent or not, when the, when the, the other shoe drops, I just can't have respect for somebody like that because to me in my life, the way I live my life, no amount of money is worth being that type of person that would just trivialize other human lives and completely you get what I'm trying to say. Right. And that's, and that's just for me. I know that, I know that there's, there's other dudes who would be like, Oh, you're such a fucking white knight. Oh, it's a dog eat dog world. These guys are fucking. And it's like, okay, cool. I think you're a loser and that's, and you think I'm a loser. We'll leave it at that. No problem. <laughs> Anyways, uh, I wanted to play a little bit of this video because a, <clears throat> I like their takes and um, B we, uh, it, it shows some of the clips that are, you know, th I guess the whole point of this is, you know, Obviously, a lot of the, the Tate fandom is going to be like, oh, well, they're just trying to, it's another setup trying to get, you know, the Matrix is coming after him again. And it's like, well, honestly, some of the shit has come out of their own mouths. Like they've indicted themselves talking about how much they love teenagers and taking virginities. And, and you'll see what I'm talking about in a second. So you boys, okay, when they're trying to take out a criminal organization, the process is slow. It is slow is and long. But they gonna get your ass when they run a recall on your ass. You said that like they was running a train. Huh? The, it feels like it, it feels like because they're running over 20, 30 people. So if you're unaware, Andrew Tate, all right, everyone's favorite sex offender, uh, is facing a tremendous <laughs> amount of jail time. That's what he is, man. You have to remember. I'm not saying he's guilty because they found him guilty. I'm saying he's guilty because he, he self-snitched. He said it. <laughs> self I think the one that really matters to people is the fact that they're being alleged to have trafficked underage people. Don't ask me. Just watch them talk. Two girls have claimed Andrew Tate approached them on social media when they still attended school. PhD is a pimp and hose degree. So the recruitment process is you message them on Instagram, I was contacted by Andrew Tate, the older of the Tate brothers, three years ago when I was just 16. Daria was 16 when she says she received a private message on Instagram two years ago from Andrew Tate's account. It read simply, Romanian girl, followed by a strawberry emoji. So this is all part of Andrew's old recruitment strategy, which he's talked over and over in his academies. He's done... Even on the Nelk Boys interview, um, excuse me, on the Nelk Boys podcast he was on, he gloats time and time again on how we used to just recruit young girls to, and essentially manipulate them into having sex with him. I say manipulate, you'd seduce them into having sex with them and get them wanting to be involved with him. And then he would spin the whole webcam thing on them and almost, he would almost, act, he would almost act like they had no choice. He was just so good at what he did. He could essentially get any girl to then come get into sex work for him. And I don't like, if you're the type of person that's, that thinks that's cool and great, like we're just never, me and you will never see eye to eye, right? What do you inbox the woman? I live in Bucharest, Romania. That doesn't matter if I'm in London, Bucharest, Moscow, anywhere I am. I just say Bucharest question mark or Moscow question mark or London question mark. Sometimes, because like I said, intrigue, I'll put a completely pointless emoji on the end. Some cherries or an orange or a strawberry. I asked around to my other friends and my classmates who were also 15, 16 at the time. And a couple of them also told me they received messages. So I messaged her, she's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a fuck, not about me. It was a pretty well known take. fact that he had kind of a network of young girls. So I'm only 16, but Andrew Tate doesn't give a fuck. You don't know about me. I can get you to come over and have sex with me, and then you'll be working for me by the end of the weekend. Hell yeah, dude. Sick, bro. What color is your Bugatti, bro? Are you fucking kidding like, me? What the fuck would I read for you? If you've got a fit sister who's 16, maybe. Muslims have the best frame on earth. I want a virgin wife at 16 who's going to obey me. That's yeah. what I want. You know you said it looks like I'm in a teenage girl's bedroom. Yeah. To, to some people, that would be an insult. But to me, I find that quite flattering. To me. Yeah. So obviously, if you're listening and not watching, like there is some of these are just kind of like back to back clips that are, you know, and I always with a grain of salt, certainly sometimes when things are taken on a context, but some of these things don't, I feel like don't need a lot of context. And I'm also well aware for a lot of these people that would defend this guy that he says a lot of crazy shit. 
that is, uh, <clears throat> I would say, a lot of embellished shit that is for the sake of getting clips that go viral and getting attention. But I also think there's an obvious theme going on here, and he's talked about some of these things so many times, it's clear that he's being honest in, in, in much of this. That's you my know, like. That's exactly what you'd expect. Like. I'm fucking all these... 15 year old you know who one of the guys was that was candace owens's husband uh all yeah so he was taught this is another clip where he goes i'm fucking all these 15 year oh sorry what's the consent of it let's age of consent 16 year olds basically uh type of thing but at least 15 year old you know who one of the guys was that was candace owens's husband you know how candace owens always defended this guy yeah it's because her husband's really good friends with this oh. dude so she's talking about he's such a good man yo if they weren't buddy buddy or part of the same fucking scam these people would never associate with a dude like this who's a self-proclaimed pip, loves to bang 15, 14 year old, 60, I don't care. Bro, that's when I see a conservative and they defend Andrew Tate, I know they have no principles or values. 100%. Because literally his whole <laughs> life has been the antithesis of any kind of conservative traditional mm -hmm. value. I love this take from Preach, and I could not agree more. I see everything I've seen in the last couple of years is Andrew obviously aligning with like conservatives. And they've had him on their podcast. Other people I respect, like I like Zuby, he's another guy on Twitter, I think. Uh, has some pretty good takes and you know Andrew's on all these different podcasts and people love this dude and it's like are we just forgetting all of these things that he said about how he built his business and unapologetically doesn't care and so it makes you wonder like are are these people actually concerned about the things they say they're concerned about or they just they just like to have the popular guy in the room with them so their podcast can get cool numbers you know what I mean I feel like a lot of people are just mostly talk here pimping girls defrauding men basically he himself admits to i had these guys selling their houses life savings loans all of it to me give me it all you Guy, feel bad or no fuck no to give a solitary f i don't care i used to take lonely men and take hundred thousand for them through my webcam yeah. business and like i enjoyed it because like give me your money your piece of what kind of moral person does it? So totally agree with that take there from Preach. This next segment is a little compilation where he's talking about his main bitch, Vivian. They take some context where he's talking about how he started a relationship with her 10 years ago. And then I believe she was the same girl, I believe, that was in the video that surfaces of him basically beating up this chick that was in, you know, according to them, quote unquote, kind of like part of the role play sadomasochist type of shit but it, it essentially turns out to be hold on this guy is vivian's younger vivian's like 21 vivian's 21 a lawyer and at this point kid. he's had her, he's been a girlfriend for six years there's a video from 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual act with one of my ex-girlfriends so it's basically taking all these clips and talking about these timelines and deducing that he essentially started seeing this girl vivian his now main bitch when she was 14 basically 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual hello everyone um i just wanted to say something about the video that's been released recently and about got her to come out and say this i believe me and my ex-boyfriend andrew tate andrew is my still great friend what you guys saw on the video it's just what we used to do it was just pure game he's a great guy he would never hurt anyone there's a video from 10 years ago that showed me in a sexual act with one of my ex-girlfriends yeah, so that that's the same girl. That was her. That was a video she came out with saying the violence you saw in the video was just a game, was part of the fun, but but she was literally like a, a 14, 15, 16 years old. I mean, you want to talk about you want to talk about grooming. Like we can talk about that cuz this is some real shit going on here. You do the math. I don't want to. You do the math. I don't want to. She was basically 14, 15 when they got into a relationship. That means yeah. when did he start talking to her? When she was 14. Or earlier. Depending on how long that shit took. Think about that. Think about this. Coconuts and Barbados. So they go on to give some more uh, some more takes. Uh, and then there's this clip of Tristan. Here's a good one. It's like taking the virginity of a really beautiful woman. I get to have this experience and no one else gets to have it again. It is a little bit better, but the real pleasure is in the fact that somebody else would love to have this, and I get it. That's why this is good. That makes sense. I'll give you that. I agree with that. When you are in the true abundance mindset of you can have, 
the pick of the crop. You can have the world's most attractive women. I mean, one of my main chicks has 200,000 Instagram followers and I took her virginity when she was 17. It's an abundance mindset. Yeah. I, I just so can't girls. even fathom wanting to go online and brag about that. I don't know. Like, I just think they've been so caught up in this lifestyle for so long where, where young foreign women are just such inanimate objects to them. Soulless fleshlights made only for their pleasure that like i just can't imagine how fucked you have to be to feel like to just to to have this view of of women at large i think so you know back when i made my video two years ago when like these sex trafficking accusations first came out the, the alleged right i didn't really know i didn't do a lot of digging on it i just made the video i was like uh huh wouldn't surprise me, you know, just from what I've seen of him and him bragging about this webcam business he started and how much he loves young girls and shit. And it wasn't until recently where I've seen some of these clips where I'm like, okay, well this, now it really wouldn't surprise me. I mean, how are you? <laughs> Cause clearly the mentality is there. You think you, you think it's a stretch to be like, oh, these guys traffic teenagers, right? Or I mean, the, the word traffic would make it sound, I, I don't know the extent of it. Not, I, I don't think it's like in the same way that maybe like Epstein would have, where it's like physical. But if you're running a webcam business and you're essentially grooming younger girls to come do sex work for you, for someone else on the internet remotely, I, am at, I that could probably still be classified as trafficking. Again, I don't know what they're guilty of, but I'm just saying when you see a lot of these clips, and you watch how the their mannerisms and their behavior and the way they talk about these girls in times when their guards down, right? Not in times when they're having a serious interview and they have to be more calculated with what they're saying. In times when they've been comfortable on the podcast with the boys, that type of thing. That's when you really get a look into how how they really operate, how they really feel. And to me, it is not a large leap to go from that to some of these potential accusations. She is a Polish, she was a Polish virgin. Man, it, it hurt her at every moment that I was <laughs> doing it, but it felt good for me, so who gives a shit? <laughs> oh, and, that, and that's Tristan Tate. You could tell the whiskey was hitting a little bit. Another, I guess another one of the charges is, is money laundering. No surprise there. Typically when you build cases like this against a criminal organization, if you want to call it that. <laughs> There's obviously money in places that the government doesn't know about. Um, you know, and like like Preach was saying at the beginning, like if they're building a RICO case on you, these types of things take years sometimes to transpire. So this idea that because they got out of the because they got out of jail however long ago and that they only spent 24 hours in jail this most recent time, this idea that they're out of the woods, I think is insane. I think they're still trying to build the case and maybe finding new evidence. And again, I want to be clear, like I'm speculating. I don't know. Could it be the matrix coming for the Tates? Because recently, according to a tweet, I just saw Andrew spoke negatively of Israel and talked about genocide and the fact that the matrix is basically all just Jews. That's like the new talking point now, apparently. <laughs> and which, you know, it, it's a good defense. It's like, well, oh, they came again for him. It's because he just talked about the Matrix and he talked about the Jews. And I don't want to go down that rabbit hole with Israel and the Jew and all that stuff. I, I'm not smart enough to have an informed opinion on that. But I do know anything's possible. I mean, it does seem like we, we live in a time where there's a real specific demographic of people you truly cannot criticize. Uh, and I just find that very interesting. I really do. I don't know shit. I just find that very interesting. Where was that? Yeah, here we go. So this tweet here, Andrew and the brothers have been arrested yet again and taken to Dicot headquarters after Romanian police raided their home. This comes barely three days after the Tate brothers spoke up about the heinous crimes committed by Israel and claimed tell the matrix is the Jews in the video, right? Um, so that was the case. I did, so the, Andrew got out of jail. Where when they After 24 hours when they got out, Andrew gave a little bit of a speech to the press. Um... I don't know if I want to watch that whole speech right here, but I did want to watch this. It was four minutes long and I haven't seen it yet. So I wanted to watch it with you. This is when they got home and they did this kind of emergency live stream and I'm sure are going to try and defend themselves and talk about why it's bullshit. So I'll, you know, give it a fair shake. What are they? 
let's not dismiss, let's not get away with it, because there's going to be a lot of questions. Attempted trafficking of a minor. Interesting. So, there are 33. This is the guy, sorry, this is the guy that loves just taking young girls' virginities, like, from his own mouth, multiple times. Drinks a little bit of whiskey, gets a little loose-lipped, and just likes to brag about it. Minor. Interesting. So, there are 33. 33. New people. 33 new people. Now, they include my yoga instructor. They include a waitress at my favorite restaurant. They include the mother of my daughter, because I'm nice to her and I give her money. Maybe I'm trying to human traffic her. They include every woman they could get their hands on to interview. All of these women have said the Tate brothers have done nothing wrong at all, but because we know them, it's attempted trafficking. Now, the oldest woman, I can't say anybody's names. The, uh, you know which one I mean. Yeah. She's 45 years old, is the oldest woman who is now our human trafficking victim. She's a successful businesswoman. She lives in Romania. I've met her maybe 10 times in my life. Lovely lady. Had lots of nice times with her. Gone out to restaurants with her. Very smart woman. I like speaking to her. But because I like speaking to her, I'm a potential human trafficker. So that's the victim who's 45 years of age. I don't even know. I, I'm assuming he's talking about some of the things they went over in these new charges. They got drummed up. So it sounds like they got 33 new... Witnesses? I, like, that doesn't make sense to me uh, why they would be doing it with just acquaintances, but uh, we'll see. One of the victims is 24 years of age, but she said in her statement that she met me, met, met us for the first time at a public hotel reception through a friend when she was 17 years of age. So when she was 17, because I said hi to her, and I know her, I'm attempting to traffic minors. You can't make this up. But the accusation makes it sound like I'm driving around in the van throwing children into the back, and then they throw me into one of the most dangerous prisons in all of Bucharest. Isn't that interesting, Andrew? So that is the new charge summed up to a T. To understand, sorry, not new charge, new accusation. Charges need some kind of fake evidence at least. These might not even become charges. We are charged with nothing new and every accusation against us from money laundering to trafficking anybody is false. Every single one. But they've seasoned this new file up with every woman I've ever met. And this is the heinous thing. And I'm going to cover this very briefly. The heinous thing about it is you're not allowed to speak to people who you are accused of doing crimes against. That's Isn't right. that correct? That's, that's right. very correct. And that's a good law in most countries where the investigating agents are not corrupt, dishonest opportunists. In a world where the, the investigative agents aren't corrupt opportunists, it's perfectly normal to say, do not speak to your victims. Let me tell you a lover boy method I did once. You'll like this. I met a girl. Okay. I fell in love. Shit. For real. That's the ultimate lover boy. Slept with her. Ho ho. Got her pregnant. <laughs> Told her I'll be with her and support her and the baby no matter what happens between us. Because I'm a good Christian man. You scumbag. The baby was born. <laughs> this child is now four years old. Disgusting. I love my daughter. Disgusting. I respect this woman very much. Gay. I spend <laughs> hundreds of thousands a year. Buying her new cars. Gay. Everything she needs for the baby. Gay. Sending her on holidays. Human trafficker. She flies on private jets. Yeah, you're a faggot. <laughs> that <laughs> was all done because maybe I was I gotta going give him credit. These guys know how to put on a show, man. <laughs> they really do. To exploit her somehow. So, I'm now not allowed to talk to my own daughter and her mother. This file may take three plus years and they've successfully stolen my daughter from me. They've stolen her from me and she will not see my face for three more years until I can bury this bullshit accusation. They've cut me off from my own blood, my own child, by saying me being so nice to her mother is going to end up human trafficking. How dare you be nice to a woman and then take care of her and have children with her? How dare you? That's disgusting. Yeah, so one of the new victims is the mother of my daughter, and I'm not allowed to talk to them. Isn't that cruel? Isn't that a knife in the back from a country I've shown nothing but respect for? And my daughter is a Romanian national. Let's just steal her father from her. That's a great idea. I, f I, I do find it interesting 
you know, traditionally, if you were being advised by a lawyer, the first thing you do when you get released after being raided and detained is not go on live stream to millions of people and run your mouth. But that is like the Tate's MO. That's what they do. And may, like, maybe that is their strength because of how influential they are. It's just like, you know, in their minds, it's like us versus the bad guys, us versus the matrix, us, us versus the people trying to, to take our lives from us, lives from us, whether or not it's justified. And the reality is for me in this situation, I know that, like with anything on the internet, there's people that just hate the Tate. So no matter what, they're like, they're obviously guilty. I hope they burn in jail. And then there's the other side, the Tate fandom, the pure, you know, the the young men that have been so inspired, but then they couldn't possibly they couldn't possibly imagine their 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 mentor doing wrong. And they know that it's obviously just another attack from the Matrix because Andrew said it's the Matrix, you know. He talks all the time about three strikes, right? First, they try to censor you and they failed at that. Then they try to arrest you and they did that and he's out. And the next thing is, well, they try and kill you, right? Well, looks like they're trying shot number two again with the arrests. But but my, my take is this, like, I don't, I have, I take no joy in anyone being in, uh, I would say, I take no joy in anyone being wrongfully convicted of something because they are outspoken about certain things, okay? And I don't know in this case. I don't personally like Andrew Tate for the reasons I've spoken about, him or his brother. Saying that, having said that, I like, like he has done so, he has done so many interviews and made so much content. I have watched podcasts where there's been sections of the podcast where he's poignant, making points, that resonate with me and what I think it means to be an accountable man. But it would be impossible as a man with morals to ignore who he is at his core, or who I believe him to be at his core. Much to, you know, and this isn't just me speculating. These are things that have come out of his mouth, right? And that's whatever. So... I think it's okay to separate those two things too, where I can be like, yeah, Andrew Tate has said some things that make sense and I think are, are, are valuable, but also he's a piece of shit. So like, regardless of the laws, you know, and the charges that stick and what is considered criminal and whatnot, and however this case pans out, it, it is part of me is just sad that men with this big of a void where morals typically live, uh, have had such a vice grip on the attention of so many young men that are looking for direction and mentors. And, you know, so many of these men now find this on their phone because that's where we spend all our time. You're no longer going down to the fucking blacksmith shop or going down to the, the corner store and meeting people in real life that can, you know, going down to the youth center or going to camp, like find it. It's like, no, so many, so many young men looking for direction and purpose in life are just on their phones all day and they're finding it with these clips that go viral and, seeing these little tidbits that resonates with them and, oh yeah, that's the whole world's out to get you. And like, everyone's forgetting about you. Like come join my fucking hustlers university, but buy my, buy my shit coin. That it, that's the worst. The fact that like Tate during all of this somehow managed to release another Solana meme coin called daddy Tate. I think it, like, so even not only is he, you know what I mean? Not only is he, I don't know. He's like leading his followers out to pasture at the same time, just fleecing them for money, not just with the Hustlers University, but then with the meme coins as well. Like it's just, it never ends. Anyways, what I was trying to say is that, yeah, I just, it, it sads me because, you know, yeah, they've made a bunch of money. They've been able to stay fit into their thirties. They got nice cars. Obviously they've slept with lots of beautiful women, but at what, you know, at what cost? They're no different than, the pimps on the street corners that used to s slap girls in the face if they didn't turn enough tricks or bring home enough money. It's like that. Is that, are those the type of d dudes we respect? Like those are the dudes in the movies in the nineties that you villainize. They just, the teachers modernized it by using the internet, by using webcams. They were early to, to that hustle and they made a fuckload of money that built, you know, that was the backbone of their, their business empire. 
And it'd be one thing to profit off the adult industry by coercing women into sex, into sex work. So you can take a percent off the top. That's morally bankrupt at best, even, even though it's a profitable industry. But now you're talking about teenagers and minors in grooming, uh, you know, I, it's, it's, I don't know. I, I feel like I don't, regardless of what his defense is, like legally, sure. You can talk about, you can talk, you can talk all day. You can write on the whiteboard, like that little video we just watched. He's writing on his whiteboard about all these people that they're part of the accusers now and these new charges and stuff like that. You can, you can write whatever you want on the whiteboard. Everything I need to know about you is, has already come out of your mouth, truthfully. So, uh, I'm sad for the world in essence that these guys were somehow the ones that kind of cornered, cornered this, this market of young men that, that needed direction. But I also, I also get why it is, but I do, I do truthfully think there's a lot of beautiful examples and wonderful men out there. They're just a lot harder to find. And you actually have to go searching because they aren't the types of people that come finding you through viral clips because that's just not how the attention market works. Um, you know, discipline and hustle and money and personal accountability are awesome. And I agree with those takes, the things they, they you know, they talk about a lot of, th a lot of times around those particular life areas, but there are so many more decent men out there preaching and living those same tenants, uh, that didn't build a smut empire on the back of vulnerable young women. So that would be my only recommendation is to, if you're looking for some sort of online mentor, maybe look for someone that's not the Tates, but again, uh, I don't know what's true, what's not. I don't know if they're guilty or not. Time will tell. Is it the Matrix trying to erase them from the map because they're speaking too much truth? Or are they just facing the music after a lifetime of thinking they can get away with anything? Time will tell. No love lost from me, but I don't know. What do you guys think? The Tates been an interesting journey these last couple of years. I remember, I remember it was like five or six years ago, is that, that tweet from Andrew, he's standing in front of a sports car saying something about, if you watch Star Wars, you're gay. It like went viral on Twitter. And that was like the first thing it was, well, who's this fucking idiot? I was like an old MMA boxer. And then, man, if we only knew then how big these motherfuckers would become, never would have believed it. <laughs> But as always, I appreciate you guys listening to my musings here. I'm just, uh, this was kind of topical and something I wanted to look into a little bit and chat about just because of the history I've had with him. And obviously for, for obvious reasons, he's, he's very present on the internet. And when you're someone like myself that spends a lot of time, spends a lot of time on the internet, you just can't help but see clips of him all the time. So, uh, we'll see what happens when this podcast comes out again. I didn't show the clip. I'm going to show it right now as we leave, but this apparently was, is what happened uh, at the end, that same stream we just heard Tristan talking about. This cannot last forever. Police are here. No, police are here. They're looking out the door. There's police pulling up at my house right now. There literally is police here. Can you, can we go live on a phone? Is that possible? No, but they are here. I can't confirm. Okay. All right. Well, you film. Shut this down. Police are here. Do they want? And that was six hours ago at the time of this recording. So I don't know if they get hauled away again, but uh, we'll see. Thank you guys for listening. Um, if you haven't yet, it mean the world to me. If you uh, checked the podcast out uh, on Storyfire, where it's released first every week. Um, and it's also comes out on Spotify and YouTube a few days later. You can consume it on there. Love to hear from you in the comments. And I appreciate your time. I'll talk to you next week. Peace.